Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our channel Testing in Nutshell. This is Neesh Kumar Singh and we are talking about X-ray tutorials. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be continuing ahead on setting up some more things about X-ray and understanding how to make use of the test environments as a part of the X-ray interaction. Now we pretty much understand that, that for a QA, test environments are pretty much important to be captured when it comes to every single execution. Now we want to understand and capture the details of different environments when we go ahead and execute a test. Now these environments can further contribute back to your coverage as well that whether a test has been completely executed in all the different environments and what are the outputs for the same. Does it make a difference in the coverage report? Let's have a look there too. And at the same time, we'll be also trying to see that by default, the test environments are not something which is visible to you. So let's see how exactly you can start configuring them and make use of the same in more details. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be trying to understand how to use test environment in X-rays. First of all, we'll be trying to enable them in the X-ray settings, then we'll be linking this environment to the executions, and then we'll be viewing them in more details that how and where we can make use of these environments while working with X-ray. In order to get started, the very first thing is of course you need to navigate to the X-ray settings, and uh, they are found under the project settings in your left panel. And when you come to the X-ray settings, we have dealt with test coverage and defect mapping in previous tutorials. Now it's time for us to jump onto the test environment. Now it's pretty much to understand that when I go to create some issues, I may be required to capture some information. For example, if I go to the test and create a new test, I have to run these tests in different environments. Of course. You may wonder that why should not be why should not we be able to capture environments right at the test level because a test is generic and created for any environment to be executed in. If in case you are interested to capture, you can do so, but I, I don't know what exactly does it make sense about. You don't need an environment to be captured at the test case level because a lot of people do ask me that how to add environments at the test case level, but trust me. Writing a test case is a different thing. Running it in environments is a different thing. So executions are something which you would need the environment to be captured in. Now if I drop here and select test execution, now here I think there's a need to have a test environment field which is currently not here. So you can look forward to configure or ask your Jira administrator to enable that field to be visible on the screen so that you can tag them right here. But this can be done even offline because it's just not on the create screen. Once the executions are created, you can pretty much do the same thing. Now let's go ahead here and let's see how to declare the environments so that you can make use of them at the issue level. So you can use the button here called as create environment and just click on this and define whatever you would like to call them as. Now environments can be created for different naming conventions. For example, if you're using a staging pipeline, you can say dev, QA, UAD, SIT, or pre-prod, and so on. Similarly, if you're using it for mobile applications, you may make use of iOS, Android, Windows, so you can target your environment accordingly. Now again, I don't have to tell much more about what exactly the environments are. If it is specific to your organization, you can determine your set of environments right here. Now let's go ahead and look into creations of these. So I'll be just using some of the environments like dev. You can also describe the environment, like what exactly this environment is all about. So I may say like uh, development uh, environment, right? And uh, you can also copy paste the URL required to you know work on this, and you can make you know direct link directly from here. Click on save. I won't, may not be doing it. Uh, Okay, so I think I just created it. Let me just refresh this page and check. So, okay, let's come here and let's create an environment. So it should have been created. Yeah, exactly. Also, I think I tried it for some other purposes. So it is already existing. So let me just go and call them, right? So anyways, just that is the process to create an environment if you're creating it for the first time. If you have created it for the 
you know initial time already then you can just add them if you have removed them so I'll just click on this and add my environments and I'm going to use this UAD now that's a good thing again we may got to know the use of both the buttons so if you have already created an environment globally then you can add them onto the project I repeat the add button is to add them or use them in the project so create environment is for global declaration of different environments and any number of projects can make use of them by using the add environment button click on save here and you would find the four environments listed and now you're ready to make use of them now let's go ahead and uh, quickly kind of you know jump onto something here and uh, let me just take you to a test so that you can understand what exactly we are referring to so if we pull out a test here again a test may not need the environment specifically right so you don't see an environment field here because there's no need to capture such information but if I quickly jump back again and look forward to an execution then execution does make sense that hey you have created a test execution but where would you like to run them right so I have a field here dedicated to capture the environment in which you want to run or which you have run this already right so you can click here you can just click on the none button and drop down and select the environment in which you have executed this right or if you have included or executed this test in multiple environment back to back you can also tag them here in detail so that it can be displayed to you right here so let me just quickly refresh this and uh, they are tabbed so now you would have the information at the environment level so you can always click this because it's not directly representable and when you come here you can say yes these are the two environments where this execution has been done right so you can capture them pretty well right at this another thing is if you are, if I would like to run this test once again or probably I create a new requirement or a new execution I can tag them to the new executions as well and they will be visible in the execution details too let's click on this window instead of running it right now let's open the execution details and have a look that do we have the environment details being displayed if you go to run a test in the x-ray now that's interesting to see here we got a test environment field and I can see the environment details that yes we are talking about two environments right now and you can you are running them in dev as well as QA in parallel right but again it, it does make sense if you're running one at a time and you're creating different executions for different environments but it's up to you how would you like to do them right there are no restrictions as such now let's go back uh, to look into the uh, reporting part that what exactly this could do when it comes to any particular output so let's see if this is going back to a requirement and uh, let me pick up a test here which must have relationship to a story where we are testing them so let's have a look here so yeah so let's go to the story MFP28 and if you look at the story right now it has uh, two tests and if, if in case they are executed no they're not yet executed so it is showing no run and now you would if you run them right if you run them you would also have the you know filters by the environment you can check what's the status on the dev environment this it in dev it is in to do and for kind of you know any other environment you can see them like they are still in to do in all the environments because we have not tagged any environment so if you're looking particularly on this test and you're tagging it to another for example if I go to this fp2 okay so let me pick up a test which we linked uh, earlier to the requirement so let's see if there's a development story here I think I should have tagged it here we got a better result no that's not the one and, uh, yeah seems like this one so here again I think we have filtered by this one so I think we are back again here so this should be 28 did I did I did I did I
Okay, so what I wanted to show you that if we have run the both the test in a particular you know uh, execution, then it would even show you that if it is okay or not okay. So you can drop down here and view the filter criteria, and you can pull it on, and it will show you whether what's the status of the execution. So the point here, what I wanted to justify you here, that you can make use of the environment filter as well to see whether there this coverage is only from one particular environment or multiple environment. So right now it says that yeah, you might have executed, but not both the test has been executed there. So this is the drawback of having it being captured before after execution. So you should always tag your environment once the execution is created, and then pull this into the execution so that details can be captured and then displayed to you. So it will re result into no K, which is not executed, and environments are pending to do, right? So this is how the environment works in reality, and you can pretty much do a better tracking of all your executions using the test environment team. I hope you got a good clarity of this. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.